How's it going guys? Sam here with another Nomad Survival video and I just wanted to make another one of the gemstone guides. Uh, we're at 120. Uh, I have been able to push it to 131 but like not super consistently so it's just still 120 but I want to do one for major update number 5. So character, Whisper is still, Whisper is fantastic, Heritage Nomad so that you can grab the skills that you need. And then here's our modifiers, uh, enemy damage always going to be the last one that we touch. It's definitely the most explosive and it only gives you 9 times. So really not that important unless you're really pushing for max. Enemy damage is one of the least important ones for you to do. So HP actually is huge because it's actually 15. So just get it at 120, you can kind of move these around a little bit if you have any issues and we'll just kind of get into it on um, the most important thing is just the fact that the whisper is actually able to heal for every enemy that it hits and by doing that it's just gonna make your life easier a second thing that's probably the most important thing for this whole video that's gonna be playing at 200% speed so 200% speed is really nice because it, it kind of uh, breaks the characters a little bit. Uh, you know, we were doing 120x before, so you can totally just do this at 100% speed. There's no difference. But by playing at 200% speed, one, you're going to be farming a little bit faster. And two, you actually take a lot less damage in the beginning. Purely because the enemies don't know what to do. So highly recommend playing on 200% just because you're going to be able to level up a lot faster you're going to be able to get through this grind a lot faster it's just really nice anyways going on to why the whisper is so op it's because you're going to be healing as many times as freaking possible uh the whisper heals based off how many enemies it hits with the spirit and uh if you can hear that that like noise that's the uh whisper hitting enemies so it's hitting enemies a ton and basically you don't have to worry about your HP. The next important thing is just going to be getting the combo. And that's going to be Colorless Glyph, Death Sting, and Miniaturize. Miniaturize is definitely the most important one. Really, if you can get one point in Colorless Glyph and one point in Death Sting, and then you can kind of focus on everything else, that's going to be more than enough for you to kind of get through the first couple of levels. So definitely just make sure you're on the lookout for Colorless Glyph, it's most definitely, or sorry, for uh, Miniaturize, it's most definitely the most important thing, but don't like reroll too often in the beginning, you want to make sure you save some rerolls for a later date basically, just makes you have a little bit more survivability, so say if for some reason you take a ton of damage and you're at like 10 HP but you just hit a level, you can roll for max HP because whenever you get max HP it actually, you know, puts you to full HP. So it's, it's just a good thing to save some rerolls if you can. But other than those three abilities, feel free to pick up anything you want. Ascension is really, really strong because it's kind of a wide range. And SP regen is also extremely important because it's, it's very important that your casting as often as possible. This is going to make it to where you're not susceptible to those projectiles and the boss skills. Because when the Whisper is in the spirit form, you're actually unable to take damage from projectiles. And boss skills actually count as projectiles as well. So you just want to make sure you're casting as much as possible. And that's why HP rege or SP regen is so, so important. Other than that, yeah, just pick up whatever you can. With the SP regen nerf, it is a little bit, well, it's a lot bit worse. But it was kind of needed, so I understand why the changes were made. In regards to the evil crystals, you don't have to worry about them. Uh, they're annoying, but with this combo with Death Sting, the whole point is to deal damage as often as possible, not deal as much damage, because we're relying on the Death Sting proc to actually kill the enemies for us. In regards to this right here, Plane Shift, while is is great, not what we're looking for, because we're not going to be moving. The good thing about Plane Shift is if you're doing a run where you, you don't have any movement speed, you can actually use those spirits to teleport to the crystals and stuff like that if you're having any issues. But for this one, we're going to be going Conjuration. This pretty much turns the Whisper back into what it was before. So you get SP Regen, and that lets you cast more spirits. This way, they deal more damage. But this way, you know, enemies hit by spirits recover 5 SP. So you're going to be casting spirits a lot faster. The more spirits there are, the more... HP you get back so overall it's just a really good combo but for the most part I don't really move them any farther away than on top of my body you just want to always be protecting yourself 
We'll go ahead and skip to the first boss so I can show you guys that. I'm going to show you the first boss, second boss, third boss, final boss. And then I'll also show you the specters and kind of why the whisper is so strong for these gemstone runs. But I'll go ahead and see you then. Alright, so the specters just spawned. Uh, I didn't talk during the first boss. First boss, very simple. The nice thing about the specter, or sorry, the specters and both the bosses is that the whisper spirit is actually the priority for these targets. So if you just move your spirits away, all the specters are going to follow you. This helps you avoid a ton of damage. Uh, evasion does work on these guys, so if you have your evasion like up as much as possible, you're probably okay. But just to be safe, just move your spirits away from your character, and then you don't have to worry about these. That's the nice thing about the whisper is that. You know, one of the modifiers is enhanced events, and what this does is it spawns, as you can tell, I think it's two times the amount of specters, maybe three times. And by having enhanced events, you get 9x gemstones, but by playing the Whisper, it pretty much nullifies it. Same thing with the projectiles modifier, it's also a 9x addition, and... The Whisper is immune to projectiles when it's in this cast form, so you don't really have to worry about anything. Uh, I'll go ahead, skip to the second boss so we can take a look at that, and I will see you then. Alright, second boss is going to spawn here. Second boss, kind of actually annoying for these situations, uh, and that's because the second boss stands still occasionally. And it can get bad when your spirits are on top so like you just spawned right so your spirits are on top of your body the boss can kind of move and stand directly on top of you and he'll stand there for about three to five seconds while he's casting his ability this could not be a uh, very negative so this is very important for you to make sure your characters are gone uh for the level 60 evolution path you can go either I like going Phantom Overlord just because, so, the negative about Haunting Presence is the fact that they don't actually recover your HP on hit. So it recovers your SP, which helps you cast more, but these are going to be dealing damage to enemies without healing you, and we kind of revolve around the fact that we heal for every enemy we hit, so we don't want enemies dying faster than they need to because we need that HP. So Phantom Overlord, it's kind of really fun. So every single time a spirit is created, which is a lot because of the amount of times we're hitting enemies, it just explodes and it deals a ton of damage. So it's really fun. It also looks nice and it's also pretty good for clearing out the bosses. So I think it's a good pickup. You know, the boss is going to die really slow. That's just the name of the game when you play these. Oh, look, it just happened. So the boss is standing on top of me. Luckily, my evasion is pretty high, but that's a situation that is a negative that we kind of want to avoid if possible but it's not the end of the world it's just something I would prefer to keep the boss away from you basically for all the bosses if you're trying to get chess try and kill the boss directly on top of you if you want to be a real stickler I generally just put movement speed on uh, you know 100% that way we can't move at all you can leave yourself 99% right so you get that 1% move and you'll move really slow, but you will eventually get to the chest, so having those relics is very helpful. Especially when you have the colorless cliff relic, because it increases the size, but it's not the most important thing in the world, so... If you want the relics, put 99% movement speed decrease for the modifier. If you don't care about the chest, which they are not important, it is just a bonus. Go ahead, put 100%, we'll get that uh, extra, it's probably like 0.3 <laughs> gemstone for that 1%. Gonna go ahead and skip to the third boss, which is... Honestly, it's funny, the third boss is the worst boss on this map, but the third boss is such a meme because the Whisper is immune to projectiles, so his ability just never hits you. It's very, very funny. So I'll go ahead and skip to then, go over that third boss, we'll go over the final boss, and then we'll kind of do a full overview of everything. Here's the third boss, guys. So as you can see, I'm not taking any damage from the skill. And that's because you're immune to projectiles. And technically, projectiles are boss skills. It's just, uh, Fox couldn't figure out the best way to kind of word that. So, boss skills are projectiles, if you're ever wondering. So, the Whisper just avoids them. It's really nice. Kind of cheesy, but it is what it is, you know? Can't complain. 
And then as you can see, <laughs> even, even if I don't move away from my character, since the specters are also classified as projectiles, while you're casting, they can't hit you. So there's a very small window when you're not casting that they're allowed to hit you. But between the evasion, especially when... Here, let's see if I can plan this correctly. So I'm playing the fox. And the fox's ability gives you a 30% increase in evasion every 30 seconds. It lasts for 10 seconds. I have over 100% evasion, so I'm not going to be taking any damage. That is absolutely bonkers, but it makes life really, really easy. We'll go over that a little bit more in detail later. Gonna go ahead and skip to the last boss, which is really funny because the last boss is the easiest boss on this map, <laughs> but... We'll skip to that last boss, and then we'll do kind of a full overview for the guide. Alright guys, we made it. Last boss is going to spawn here in a minute. And it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, it might take a second to kill, just because the build's kind of a little slow for damage. But you don't have to worry about it. It's not going to kill you. So, we'll just take care of this real quick. Like I said, real quick. And by real quick, I mean real slow. I did have a ton of crit chance for some reason this round. I don't know. I was just picking it up. <laughs> so, even look at all those damage procs. That's the fox. Fun fact. Half of that is the fox. And there we go. All right. So, last boss. Not that big of a deal. Our damage numbers are going to be very low because it's not about how much damage we deal. It's about how often we deal the damage. That's the whole thing with the death sting. Uh, feel free to ignore all of my abilities at the bottom. The last, like, 50 levels, I was kind of just grabbing whatever. That's the, the bad thing, is you level up so much. <laughs> but, let's kind of go over everything. So, first things first. The most important thing is that we play at 200% speed. 200% speed, it's going to make it to where you are obviously able to finish this faster. But the other good thing is that it makes the characters move too fast, honestly. And they're just not able to damage you as often as they would normally. If you don't want to play 200% speed, feel free to play it whatever percent speed you want to. I just like to get through this as fast as possible because this this guide is specifically about grinding as fast as you can. So if you just want to play the game like normal, do it by all means to each their own. Going into character select, the whisper is the whole reason why this works. There are other classes that it is possible to do this, but it's just not as consist uh, consistent. And uh, that's the most important thing for you. It's being consistent. We want to make sure we're being able to do this every single time we go into this. Modifiers, saw those earlier. Can go over those again. We'll actually just hop into it real quick. So here's our modifiers. We got enemy HP maxed out, enemy speed maxed out, player speed, like I said. You could move this to 99. It's literally the difference of 0.1. And this is going to let you get to those relic chests. But you don't need it. The relic chests, they don't do anything extra for you. They're just a little helpful. It's not that big of a deal if you get them or not. Player damage, you get maxed out. And then player HP. Put this wherever you're comfortable. Uh, I generally just leave it here. I've done it all the way up to 125 and then moved this up to 130. But that is not consistent. I had to play a handful of rounds before I got one that worked. And then all of these are clicked and they actually don't matter at all that's the best part the whisper cheeses through all of these because enemy projectiles doesn't matter if there's extra because you don't take damage from them anyways enhanced bosses basically their abilities just go off more often or they're larger and again since they're technically projectiles you can't get damaged by them and then lastly enhanced events the third map just means that there's going to be more specters again Spectres are projectiles. You don't get hit by them while you're casting your spirit. It's ridiculous. Jeez. Gotta love it. Moving on to weapon skills and passives. So there's really a handful that are specifically needed. The most important being miniaturize. Miniaturize is huge. You want to make sure that you have that evasion. Evasion is very, very important. There's really only like a, I don't know, one to two second time period where you're able to take damage just purely because of the whispers cast time but just get evasion all the way up that way you don't have to worry about anything the other ones that you want are going to be colorless glyph and death sting with those three you're going to be able to do this with ease sp regen is also very important so i would actually put that right behind miniaturize 
Colorless Glyph and Death Sting. Get like one or two points in those early on, but you don't really need a ton. Death Sting, you don't want to max out. Just get to like level six or level seven. You want to be able to kill enemies consistently, but you also want to be able to hit enemies as much as possible because you're relying on that HP that they give you every single time you hit an enemy with the Whisper. So it's important that you don't just obliterate everything. Granted, if you do, it's not that big of a deal, but this is just the most consistent way to do it. For pet, you're going to want to go the fox. The fox is the whole reason. Well, okay, not the whole reason, but a large reason why this works so well. One, the fox is going to be dealing a lot of damage because the fox gets to attack based off how many attacks you evade. Since you're evading 99% of the attacks, the fox is going to be going ham. It does a ton of damage. It's great for bossing. And on top of that, the, box, uh, the fox's special ability is every 30 seconds when it casts, you get an increased 30% evasion. And when you have miniaturized maxed out, that's going to get your evasion total to 110%. The extra 10% doesn't matter, but basically just means you're not taking any damage. It's a free 10 seconds where you don't have to worry about anything. This is more than enough time for you to cast like at least once, maybe twice. And if you're really, really, really struggling for some reason, it's going to give you that breathing room to fill your HP bar back up. Lastly, moving on to the bosses and the map events. Like I kind of explained when we were going over the modifiers, you don't have to worry about it at all. It's, that's the best part about this. Honestly, the mobs are the biggest worry. There's a couple that just for some reason deal significantly more damage than the, other, uh, than the others. Like the goblins that are witches. For some reason, those hit way harder and more often than any other mob in this map. I don't know if it's just like they have increased accuracy or something like that. But those are really the only problem. And even then, it's it's not really actually a problem. It's just like, oh, these might damage me a little. So the bosses and the map events, literally irrelevant. If you're worried about those crystals, because the crystals do increase the enemy damage as well as their HP, the nice thing is this build revolves around not dealing a lot of damage. So it doesn't matter what HP they have. They're going to die from Death Sting regardless. It one-shots them at any HP amount so you don't have to worry about it but for some reason if that's really bothering you put your player speed at 99% and then move to one of those relic chests if you have your invocation leveled up all the way in the store you're able to purchase one of those skulls the skulls will kill all map events it'll take care of all of those crystals so whenever you kill a boss just pick up one of those skulls wipe all of the crystals that are out currently and you're good to go Especially like if you do it with the level, or sorry, the minute 21 boss, that's going to be every single crystal that spawned. There's only one more that's going to spawn at 25 minutes. And by that point, you really don't have to worry about damage. You're built so far ahead. So the map itself is not an issue. You really just want to make sure that you're able to get miniaturized easy. And the best thing is like at the beginning of the video, you don't really have to worry about taking damage in general those first couple of minutes. Uh, you... With the 200% increased uh, time, the mobs just can't hit you, <laughs> for lack of better terms. And if even if they do, every time you cast, there's like, you know, 50, 100 mobs on your screen. Every single time you hit one of those, you get like 30 HP back, I think it is, and you got nothing to worry about. So it's really easy to get up to level 40, level 50 without any worries, and then by that time, you're good to go. So if you guys have any questions, definitely let me know. I'm going to try and write out exactly what the main points are. So if anyone just like struggles with watching the video and getting all the information, especially because sometimes I talk in circles, I'll put the main points down below. So if that's easier for you, just look down there. We'll have a very concrete, specific guide for you. Other than that, feel free to ask me questions. And if there's anything else you need help with, just let me know. As always, guys, I appreciate the support. If you made it this far, go ahead, like, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you on the next one.